much more affordable. Um, I'll um, I will jump into the presentation now if that's if that's okay. Um, so bear with me one moment. Let me so I get share the right screen. So just a sanity check, can everyone see, am I yeah. sharing my screen now? Um, and hopefully I'm sharing PowerPoint and uh, not yeah. my p and um, Right, okay, so. So I think, um, first of all, you know, that there's, a, there's an elephant in the room, which is why, why have a website, okay? When we've got, you know, social media platforms that can enable us to target, um, our customers really at a really granular level, okay? Um, and, and those are getting much more feature rich and functional and intelligent all the time. Well, in my opinion, um, there's, there's a couple of reasons for that. It promotes your business 24 seven. It's the foundation of your online presence. Um, and it will make you money. Um, and that is the key key element here really. Um, your website isn't a utility um, that's a necessary cost. It's a marketing tool that should make you money if it's a, if it's if it's done done correctly. And it's also yours. So if you if you're running your business from a Facebook page or a LinkedIn page and Facebook or LinkedIn change their terms and conditions, then you're at their mercy. If you have a problem with it and you try and contact Facebook for support, Good luck. Um, so it's it's really fundamental. And I don't think it's ever been more important than it is now. Um, however, I would imagine and I'll stick my neck out here that all of us on this call have probably around a dozen, at least a dozen competitors within a, within the neck within the twenty or thirty miles from from where we're based. So how do you stand? How do you ensure that you're that you stand out from the crowd and your website is um, is the one they remember, it's the one they get to and the one they remember. And the answer to that is really simple. You make it interesting and you make it engaging and you make it easy to use. But like all simplistic answers, um, the devil's in the details. So let's start, let's look at, look at that in more detail. Um, if we start with the basics, um, so first things first, always use clear, clean, crisp fonts. Don't use jargon, don't use flowery language because if people have to think about what you're trying to tell them, what you're trying to impart, they probably won't. And be descriptive with, your, with the name of your website. You, um, so Rock and Hurst Builders, New Forest Tree Surgeons, you, because those are, quite, those are the terms that, that people are going to search for. And if you can't be descriptive with the name, be descriptive with the titles of the pages behind, behind that. Be mo mobile friendly. Um, this is a massive one. And, and by mobile friendly, I don't mean just resizing the images and the text to make it fit nicely on, a, on the smaller screens. Think about what the what those visitors to your site are actually doing when they're looking at your website on their mobile. And I pretty much guarantee they're probably doing two or three different things at the same time. They're prob they might be managing kids, they might be watching TV, they might be um, trying walking down the high street trying to find an address. Um, so think about that that experience and, and, and adapt the content and the experience of, uh, accordingly. Professional quality images, um, no, there really is no excuse not to. Um, either employ a professional photographer um, or there's this, or buy, or buy images. Hosting, uh, so you can, you can have your site hosted for a few dollars a month. Um, but at that level, you do get what you pay for, and you'll probably be on the same servers as you know, hundreds or even a thousand or two thousand different other web, other different websites. And and that, other than the security concerns around that, that also will slow down your slow down your website, which will which will affect your rankings in Google, but also 
the key point to this is ask yourself how patient are you when you're waiting for a website to, to load and make sure your website is supported a lot of people forget that their website is actually built on software um, and it's probably got two or three other uh, software applications built into it uh, whether that's a booking system payment system so on and so forth and when it goes and that's sitting on a piece of hardware in a data somewhere and at one point it's going to go wrong and you want to make sure that you've got good backup in that respect rather than scrabbling around trying to get it fixed so um so also you know, in terms of um your website you want to make it work for yourself um, you don't want to be a slave to it. And there's a whole range of things that you can do to um, in this respect. So you can have chatbots that will answer basic questions uh, and qualify your visitors. So you're not taking lots of uh, uh, lots of questions that you don't need to. And, and chatbots can also filter people down or funnel people down to take various actions that you want them to take. You can integrate it with third-party systems such as email marketing platforms like MailChimp, booking systems like Calendly, your social media platforms to upgrade gallery, update galleries, for example. And, and also um, think about changing the content on your site, right? um, dependent on the time of the year. You know, do you, do, does your business have the same message in the run up to Valentine's Day, as it does in the height of summer, as it does towards, you know, in the run up to Christmas. I would think probably not. So build all that content in there and have your website update that and change that content um, at the appropriate times. So personalization um, can, be, can be a game changer, okay? So if you consider all your website's doing is communicating your message to, to, to your customers and potential customers. And if you think about how you do that at a personal level, you, you, you adapt your message dependent on who you're talking to, where they are, what time it is, how they're communicating with you, how many times you've spoken to, to them. And your, web, and your website's no should be no different to that um and again you know, you know if you websites on the you know, latest sort of technology will enable you to or enable your website to understand where someone is um how they're accessing your site how many times they've been on your site and and adapt the message to it accordingly so for example if you're a restaurant in Livington your website should be able to understand the difference between someone walking down the high street on their mobile device and from someone that's maybe sat behind a desktop at three o'clock in the morning, you know, in Aberdeen. And and have, and wouldn't it be great if your website would automatically change the message to say, why don't you pop in? Why don't you come in? We've got a special offer on just for you because we know you're, you're just around the corner. So, um, content, yeah, and, yeah, as I mentioned right at the beginning, um, you know, you need to keep your website interesting and engaging, and 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 you do that with content. So, you know, be regularly update your website uh, with new and relevant content. But what is what is new and what is relevant? Okay, well, firstly, that depends on your on your market okay who your customer is um so a lot of people i speak to when i when i ask them you know well who do you who do you sell to and they go oh, i sell to everyone and and that might factually be correct um but there's we've all got a sweet spot we've all got a niche we've all got a perfect customer so it's worth spending some time understanding who that customer is um, you know, what demographic are they? Where do they live? What's their social economic status? Do they have kids? So on and so forth. And then think about how they feel in the you know before they purchase from you, and how you want them to feel after they've purchased from you. 
So are they are they excited? Are they anxious? Are they downbeat? Um, and so on. And and that will all form your messaging and and all in for and dictate what type of images you have on your on your website. And once you have that information, then you can think about um, the types of keywords that you, you build into your site. So keywords are the search terms that people will type into Google um, or, or other search engines are available, but keywords, you know, that, those will be the phrases that you want to target. So, it, and, and they're not always the, don't just think of the obvious ones, such as pubs in, pubs in the New Forest. You, know, you think about days out in the New Forest, you know, what to do in the New Forest, celebrations, you know, anniversaries, parties, so on and so forth. And think about all those and build those into, into the content. Um, blogs blogs is, a, is, a, is, a, is a passion of mine. I blog quite regularly um, and that has many benefits. Okay, first, firstly, it positions you as, a, as an authority in your field. Um, and but probably more importantly, it puts a lot of new content on your on your website, and okay, you get and you get rewarded by, for that by Google in in terms of your rankings. Uh, okay, because Google will reward, will reward you for new, interesting, and relevant content, and blogging is a great way to do that. Um, additional benefits are you can also you reuse that content for, for your social media and other marketing activities. But key to Key to content really is to have a strategy, plan out what you're going to say, when you're going to say it, who you, and who you're going to say it to, and, and know that right from the get-go. Uh, another way that you can um, uh, you benefit, you know, use your website and, 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 and make the most of it is to add an online shop uh, and, you know, the UK, the UK is the third largest e-commerce store in uh, e-commerce market in the world behind the US and China. And, and so it gives you the benefits. You can trade 24 seven, you can trade to a global marketplace. Um, probably more pertinently, it allows you to um, you know, uh, target or it allows those holiday makers and tourists that maybe come down for a weekend or a, or a holiday to actually frequent your, your establishment again and, and to buy from you again. Um, and what, what I've seen over the last um, year from a lot of customers uh, is that they've pivoted. So you know, I've, I've worked with a restaurant that's, that's decided to sell um, ingredients packs and they've had an online store built for, for that. So there's, you know, sometimes it, it takes a little bit of lateral thinking in terms of you know, what, you know how you can how you can benefit from your website even further. So, lead magnets, uh, great marketing term. Um, what is it? Okay, so a lead magnet is something that will add value to your cus to your customers or potential customers and pull them into your site. Doesn't necessarily have to have a financial value. It can be. Um, some tips, it can be recipes, it can be downloads, it can be information. Um, but it's something that will pull visitors, new and existing customers into your website. Tripwires, another great marketing term. Um, so tripwires are low risk transactions um, for, for new customers. So I work with a uh, an artist in the in the New Forest. Um, she does commissions for pets. Yeah, so she'll take the, she'll, the portrait of your of your of your dog or your cat, or and um, those she charges around five hundred pound upwards for those. She also has a number of prints, so they're hundred pound plus. So that you know, quite high value items. Quite high, you know, you don't want to get it wrong if you're buying them. So what she does in her on her website, she also sells um, lower value items. So coasters, mugs, fridge magnets, you know, anywhere from two to 10 pound. And the great thing about that is people, you new customers can buy from her. Um, it kickstarts that commercial relationship. It builds credibility and it builds trust. 
and it increases the chance that those customers will come back to her to, you know, for, for those prints or maybe a commission. So moving forward, don't ever assume that visitors, visitors to your website will know what to do next or what you want them to do next. Make it really obvious. Have big buttons on there saying cl click the call, contact us now, download, buy now. Use active and passive, active language in that respect. Don't say you can buy this from our store. You use something a little bit more um, blunt than that. So buy now from our store. Um, but and and have these throughout your site. Okay. So don't the last thing. If people have to search for a way to contact you or a way to buy from you, chances are that they probably won't. SEO is um, is a subject all on its own that we could spend a long time on. Needless to say, it's a it's a, a significant investment that um, uh, which will bring traffic onto your site. So, um, but there are some things that you can do that don't cost, that don't cost any money um, to increase traffic to your site. That are such as registering your business with the free directories all throughout all throughout the the UK, so Yale.com, for example, Thompson Local, and they'll have all links, and that will start bringing traffic into your site. Google will see that, and it will push you up the rankings as well. Having the right keywords on your site, um, you know, blogging. So there's lots that you can do, um, but it is worth thinking about employing an expert in terms of um, bringing more traffic onto uh, onto your website. But it doesn't doesn't. It doesn't just stop there. There's lots you can do. Um, you can shout about your website. You can um, you have links on it to, on your social media. Any posts you do on social media, put a link in that so that people can see it. Signatures, downloads, you know, anything that you know, any physical marketing you do have you know have a link there to it. Tell people about it. Shout about it. And um, so. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a little bit biased in this one. Um, you know, yeah. Building a website, okay, is easy and it's cheap. Okay, you can, you, there's loads of free builders out there that you can use. So it's easy and it's cheap. Building a good website is somewhat different. It's a somewhat different proposition. And building a great website is, a, um, is an art form. There's lots of skills that you need. Um, and lots of experience that you need. So it's it, it's your business, it's your livelihood. You know, why wouldn't you invest in it? And and the the analogy that I use, I don't know if anyone watches the the Netflix series that uh, you know um, I've nailed it. And basically, what they do on nailed it is they have a you know a professional you know, um, baker that's at the top of his his or her game, and he'll he'll make this really elaborate cake and um, and then he'll they'll task three people um, who don't have who won't and won't give them enough time to do it and don't have the skills to to replicate that cake and it will generally look something like this. So um, it's your business, you know, it's it's your livelihood. It's worth taking that you know, taking that step and investing in in it and using a using a professional. So. Um, Hopefully I haven't run over. That's 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 the end of the presentation. Um, you know, really happy to take any questions. Um, I'll uh, I'll stop sharing so that I can see you all. And hope. Great. thanks, John. Perfect. Uh, you're all still there. That's good. Yeah, everyone's still here, <laughs> and that's that's really good. Thanks, and, and thanks for leaving us with that image at the end. You're absolutely right. Um, I'm sure there are some questions coming through. If you've got a topic, just pop it in the chat. And I'll come to you so we don't get the same question too many times. But um, let me let me just pick up on a couple of things while while we're thinking about just observations from me. And then if you've got any thoughts around that, John, first content. I mean, you're absolutely right with that image of someone slumped over the screen. But why is it so difficult? Because if you ask someone to talk, tell me about their business, they'll talk forever about it. But yet when you ask them to write about it, they can't even write one sentence. So there's got to be some unlocking somewhere to do that. And maybe we need a session on 
on content writing um, uh, in due course, but it's just it's just an observation from me. Secondly, the same with blogging. If you say to people, you know, are you blogging? They sort of look at you blankly. Uh, and uh, actually all it is is write something and stick it on your website. Uh, and again, it's maybe the language that's the problem. Content is just you talking about your business or something you're interested in. Blogging is the same. Um, and then your only other useful one, from my experience, because I get so many emails uh, from businesses, of course, through NFBP, is the email signature one. So many times I'm interested to find out more about someone's business. And the only way I can find out what their website might be is, of course, a Google search, or I try to work it out from their email address. But why not just put it there under your signature, your name, or, you know, preferably with a live link, but it doesn't have to be. So really useful um, useful tip, tips there. But content, I mean, I see others are picking up on that. What's, what, why is it so difficult, John? So content writing is a, is a, is a skill set all of its own and um i think it's, it's 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 a difficult one because when we talk there's there's we communicate on so many different levels with body language tone of voice inflection and so on and 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 we there's a there's another type of connection and when we're just writing something down it's it, it's very easy just to you lose all of those other tools so it, it is a it's a it's a it's a it's a difficult one and it's it's slightly out of my realms of uh, of expertise but it's um it's an industry all on its own and it's worth actually if you can't or if you're not happy with writing that content it's again it's to, to employ someone that that is good yeah, and, and yeah, can absolutely. can do and, and there are there are people in the new forest who are who who specialize in that as well as uh, various marketing agencies who can help with that so yeah let's uh, let's have a look at um uh, at that in in more detail i know tanya is edging to come in and i think uh, james also made the point as well from uh, from barclay marketing uh, just just quickly on content we'll go to another question tanya Yes, um, I mean, content is something we do an awful lot of because it, it permeates not just websites, but literally all marketing. It's all about your messages. And I think the biggest stumbling block for businesses is you almost need to get yourself out of your business and start thinking about your target market. And that's what a lot of businesses struggle with because you're so a lot of businesses we find are so close that they kind of assume that people know what they're talking about. And I think that's that's the biggest advice I would say is take a big step away from it, go up in a little helicopter and look down and say, if somebody's never come to your business before, how would you explain it to them? Yeah. And if are that, you know, if, and keep in mind who your target market is. Yeah, no, thanks. So you're absolutely right, Tanya. And uh, in a way, that's why it's quite simple to do. But on the other hand, when, you, when you've got that block, that blank, you, you're not uh, sure how to begin. So thanks for that advice. Uh, Lou, you've got various questions, but I think the one about design and where do you begin and what design works and so on, uh, what, what's your thinking around there, given that you, that's something you're working on at the moment? Oh, just unmute. And then maybe Bex has something to say about the design uh, as well. <laughs> might be better <laughs> is that better yeah that's it Go for it. okay um yeah so um i've come from a stable of working for national law firms so it was all highly branded in a very highly branded environment very masculine very um you know very persuasive very uh different from the world that i live in in my own, own world these days and so I'm looking to create a new brand which reflects what I do which is more um, cohesive much more sort of um, um, you know something that's more approachable for people so um, I've been looking at different options but um, I was wondering with um, John, um, is that something you can help with, with the brand design that's not going to cost a fortune? Because I've had quotes from brand designers and <laughs> they're really expensive and I'm only tiny. So I just need to get this sort of in the right balance with me having control over the brand design, 
but working with someone who can guide me because that's not my forte. Yeah, I think um, I mean, the key thing with brand, well, it's a couple of things really, is one is to be true to yourself um, what, and, and be comfortable with it. But I think also if you, you all, if you try and make something that's perfect, you, you know, perfection stalls progress as well. So I think it's, it's a case of getting something that you're comfortable with uh, at this point in time and keeping it under constant review so that you can, you can change, have, have a system where you can change it easily and e efficiently. Um, designs, you know, it is a, it is a very personal thing. And I think if you asked if we had a design of anything, uh, any website here, we showed it to all 25 people on the call, we get 25 different opinions. So yeah, and the, the most important person really in terms of the look and feel of your site, as long as it's easy to use, yeah, um, but the look and feel is it needs to be, you need to be happy with it basically. That's, that's the key thing because if you're not comfortable with it, then you know, no one will be. Right. No, thanks, John. Uh, Bex, I know it's putting you on the spot, but that's your <laughs> business. So it is, what, yeah. What's your first response to someone like Lou coming to you and saying, how do I design my brand? Yeah, we always take it. You don't do any visuals straight away. You always go back to your brand story. It's very important. Like, like John was saying, it's all about the look and feel that you want to create. So it's all down to the values that you're wanting to express through your brand, um, who, who it is that you're wanting to help. Um, the emotions that you want to convey through it. So there's all of this groundwork that you need to do first off before you even jump into the actual visual side of it. Um, but it's also it's so much more than just a logo. It's down, again, it's emanating that feel. And so you've got to think about how the tone of voice comes across and the tone can also be expressed through the words that you're using, the language, um, the style that you're using as well. So there's a lot to consider in there, the color psychology. Um, so there's a lot that's always brought in, but it helps to create that overall picture uh, for you. No, thanks, Bex. And I guess a lot of what you've just described is easier once you know the story and what the message is you're yes. trying to convey. Yeah, because that filters through everything that you then do. And it's also a great way to a resource that you've got for any decisions you're making later on in the business, because you can always filter it back through. Does that align with you know, what I stand for, what matters most to me? Um, so you've always got that as your foundation. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, thanks, um, uh, Bex. And Bex did a session for us many months ago, but maybe it's time for another reminder <laughs> sometime in the next few months, if, if you've got time to do that. Um, there's, there's, there's various comments about content and so on, but um, good question from, uh, uh, I've got to find it again, but basically examples of blogs and so on. I mean, I suppose there isn't a site of uh, good examples of blogs, but uh, what is a good blog, would you say, John? Well, good. <laughs> very simplistically, a good blog is, is something that people read, um, that take the time out of their day to read. So um, you, you have to think, and, it, and again, it all comes down to uh, knowing your audience, um, knowing you, what you're, you know, who you're trying to target. Um, if you try and have something that um, appeals to everyone, it will, it will generally appeal to no one. So I always find, you know, when I look at the blogs that I write, the ones that are um, most popular are the ones that are educational, um, that are easy to consume. So five top tips or, you know, you know, 10 ways you can identify, you know, I wrote one the other day, 10 ways you can identify your personal, your perfect customer, sorry. Um, and I, I find those are the ones that, um, that, Get more re get more attention and get more success um, than than anything else. So something that that adds value to provides value to people and is easy to read. You, you know, you're absolutely you're, right, John. And that's why you're speaking on the call today. So you did a blog about you know something about how to how to do a good website, and uh, I, I jumped on it and thought, aha, get him get him on board. For one <laughs> But um, Tanya asked the question, uh, so again, another good one, because others have talked about keeping it simple, but how long, you know, a good blog, is that going to be a thousand words or is it going to be a hundred words? 
I, I would say it's probably somewhere in the in the middle grounds um, because you know if once you start and it depends on the subject matter, right? Um, so if it's a really technical subject matter that's appealing to a you know, subsea engineer a subsea engineering network, then it's, it might be much longer and it might be very technical, but generally. Um, a blog is there to provide a high level of information that then pulls people into into your website and ultimately into you so that and then you can engage with them and actually and that's that's what you want you don't want you don't want to, you don't want to provide a blog that tells people everything they need to know so they don't need to contact you um of course if it is quite long you can always split it into two and do two blogs and then you've covered off the next one as well so that's another possibility uh, absolutely and it, uh, you know i think if you're gonna if you're gonna start you, know, uh, you, you kind of need to understand where a blog stops and a and a, and a book starts right as well <laughs> yeah absolutely thank you thanks uh elaine good question around chatbots a number of people have asked about them and so on but i think you you were going to comment on a good example yeah now all it is is we've had an inquiry bot on our website for three weeks and it's led to three pieces of work which we've actually been thrilled with. Um, and I understand that we're sort of helping people that are looking for help when they're in financial distress, et cetera. Um, and now might, you might think there's quite a lot of questions, but that's more than we've had, say, for six or nine months off of the website. So uh, I just wanted to say from our experience, it's an actually, there's lots of companies out there. We tried one uh, a few months ago, which wasn't very good, but this particular one is all through artificial intelligence. So the questioning it takes the client down, it sort of proactively gets them to, it's not being reactive, it's being proactive in when it takes it takes them along on a journey. So yeah, just a really positive uh, thing really about InquiryBot and how it's worked on our website. Excellent. So there's going to be lots of hits on the Anthony Batty website in a minute <laughs> as everyone goes and has a look. But if uh, just put the site in there again, just so that everyone knows what, what you've just described for okay. us. Okay, yeah, yeah, and they can go and have a look. And lots of great advice there from, from Jane, and as well as Tanya from uh, Bartley Marketing. Don't forget everyone, if you want to save the chat, do so before five o'clock, click on the three dots and uh, it should say something like save chat. And then you can follow up with people afterwards. I just wanna give Matt some time now just to update us uh, from NFDC. And then if we still have a couple of minutes, we'll come back again shortly. Matt, over to you. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, where are we with regard to the grant? So I think the headline is that with regard to the current funding tranche that we've got for discretionary grant funding, there's nine days left on that. So that closes at uh, midday next next Friday, the 26th. Um, I avoid going into the detail on that because I've explained that in detail over the last two or three weeks. Uh, if you've got any queries, head to the District Council website.